last night the Suns were in Orlando taking on the Magic. You got DeAndre Ayton, no Chris Paul, no Devin Booker still, but you know what? You know who they got? They got the OG Jay Crowder knocking down the corner three. He missed it. Did he and miss D- it? D.A. took it in. Put respect oh, on the bed. Oh, oh, that's what you're talking about, the big so, fella. I yeah. got you. There we go. He, keep me tight. <laughs> uh, then Cameron Payne finds Aiden. A little float Ooh, game. Did you, a, did you have a float game perk? Did you have a float game uh, perk? Uh, no, nah, I really didn't have no game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm you happy. See, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, perk speaks the truth, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Perk has never lied. But again, the Suns. Mikel Bridges, Defensive Player of the Year votes, ladies and gentlemen. Long Don't long. forget the guards. All right, now, despite losing a few game, a few clutch uh, games since Chris Paul went down, the Suns are still 27-5 and five in games that are within five, uh, five points in the final five minutes. Ooh. That's on pace to be the second-best record, record in the clutch time in the last 25 seasons behind the 73-win Warrior team. And that's very, very good company to be in. Now, look. The Suns have a little bit harder test tonight as they take on the East top seed, the Heat. Devin Booker is going to be back, but Cheney, I want to know. What you got for us? You got something for we us today? Cheat I, you sheet, got, baby. You, got check, okay, yeah. you guys know I love bigs because I'm a post player. So is Perk, and we got to keep it together. And a couple of bigs have been in the news, rightly so, based on MVP conversations. Guys like Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. But it's also great to see that the NBA has depth at this position right now. Tonight, we have DeAndre Ayton versus Bam out of the bio. But it's really Nigerian, so out of bio. Two very different posts that have stepped up with their teammates in and out of the lineup. So here's exactly what you need to know. Let's start with D.A. Go D.A. That's my D.A. All right. Since Chris Paul's injury, Aiton has stepped in as a mid-range monster, scoring 4.3 points per game on his midi on 47% shooting. That's 10th best in the NBA at this time and first amongst centers behind players like DeRozan, KD, and McCollum. He's right in that company. So roll me my tape, producer Quick Coop, baby. Let's look at how he gets his mid-range. All right, nice little give-and-go action. He uses the reverse pivot here. All right, nice little shot. The closeout is close, but that nice move right there created space. Again, how does he create space? I love that he does what you're supposed to do as a post. Run to the rim. He's guarded by Rudy Gobert, three-time defensive player of the year. All right, he vacates up to create some space. Knocks down the midi. Very, very impressive. While Aiton is more of a finisher, Bam is an offensive hub for the Heat, scoring or assisting on over 28 points per game. That's fourth most among centers behind only Jokic, Embiid, and Cat. Now get this, only 61% of his baskets are assisted compared to 84% of baskets assisted for DA. So Bam creates more of his own offense than DA. Quite cool, baby, one more time. All right, I love that Bam does this because he keeps his eyes up. Look at the vision. How does he create for others? A nice replacement action in the corner. Look at this dime, bam, right off the floor. My coach Tara Vanderveer would have loved that with our triangle offense. Again in the pinch. All right, let's look at the spacing. He realizes no one's in the paint. All right, this is easy money barbecue chicken. What do you do? A nice little sweet baseline move and great finish. We've got two centers that are doing it two completely different ways. And these two guys have also got their teams to the top of their conferences. I'm going to be watching, you got this perk, the paint tonight. Ooh, okay, okay. Janae, great stuff as usual. My question is this, perk, after seeing this, which of these two teams, the Heat or the Suns, which one has, let's say, the harder path to the NBA Finals? I gotta go with the Miami Heat. Why? Because the East, is that much better than the Western Conference this year. Like, it's, it's about four or five teams in the Eastern Conference that could actually make it to the finals. So if you look at all the superstars that are in the Eastern Conference, you look at the duo between uh, uh, James Harden and MB, yep. you look at the big three in Milwaukee, the defending champions, you look at the Celtics, the way that they're playing right now, Jason Tatum, like, he is putting his name in the conversation for us, you know, uh, being one of the elite superstars in the game today. So when I look at the Miami Heat, I'm looking at all these guys they got to face, DeMar DeRozan, guys that could light you up. And let's not even forget about the Nets. The Brooklyn they, could be eight. Right. They could be one versus eight, Miami right. versus Brooklyn. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have to agree. You know, I think the East, it's going to be a very difficult path. And, you know, we heard at the trade deadline, a lot of front office executives were like, oh, snap, everyone's getting better. I mean, obviously, Brooklyn is waiting on Ben Simmons to play, but you saw the number there. Uh, BPI has the Suns as the favorites to make it to the finals. Like, they have the best path. I'm going to say the East is much more difficult for all the reasons that Perth mentioned. I mean, you've got superstars. You know, you, normally you want them in the placement that you want if you're a team that's maybe in four and below. But now you've got a Nets team that maybe is going to be playing better and hopefully will, you know, look to move up the standings. It's going to be very difficult in the East, whereas in the West you can say, okay, this circumstance, if the Warriors get better, uh, I know the Grizz feel really good about themselves right now. The availability of players come the West will be important. Okay, so the Suns went to the finals last year, season. The Heat the year before. Uh, I want to ask you, Ramona, which of these two teams are better than their finals teams in the last two years? Ooh. Better than their finals. Ooh. Yeah, so Miami when they lost to the Lakers and then yeah. Phoenix when they lost to Milwaukee. Which of these two teams do you think is in a better position to win a championship than they did in those two I mean, teams? I think I, I, the Suns, because they were there last year and their young kids have gotten so much more experience this year, especially with Devin Booker and Chris Paul being out right now. I think Cam Johnson has had, played a good role. I think DeAndre Ayton has stepped up in, into his role. The campaign... To me, the Suns are better than they were last year. They've always believed. They've believed in themselves since they won eight in a row in the bubble. But Miami's, Miami's better, too, than they were. I mean, they've gotten contributions from so many guys that you hadn't even heard of before the season started. Um, but I, I would say the, the Suns have an easier path, and they're better than they were last year. Yeah, I, I keep watching the Suns, and the Suns are scary because the Suns are better. They're deeper. They're playing with more um, more confidence. Cam Johnson has been absolutely outstanding. Like, you look at their team, their depth, they got they got depth throughout at yep. every position. <laughs> JaVale McGee, Bismack Biombo at the center spot, they're doing so much. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.